Skid Marks. He was on our show uh, last week. Yes. He called in with a little song. He's 12 years old. Mm -hmm. he called in with a um, Bill and Monica song. Well, now he sent his little tape. He does song parodies. He's 11 years old. He put us to shame. He has more creativity than you and I put together, I, I do that believe. It doesn't take much. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Be quite honest. But he uh, FedExed a package, and uh, he's got three songs for us to play today. He's got a, a Titanic one. Yep. And he's got a Charles Grodin one. Yeah, Charles Grodin toupee song from Skid Marks. And a song he likes to call, I Like to Fart. All right. It'll be nice to, you know, hear an 11-year-old doing fart humor instead of us. And he's he's coming on the show? Is this what I hear? Yeah, I think he's going to stop by tomorrow. I feel special. I feel like a, a celebrity is going to be on our show for once. We'll have him in the imaginary ballroom. Yeah, skid mark jamming tomorrow on the Opie <laughs> Anthony show. If you're a faithful listener of the program, you know who he is. Also, I'm very excited to bring back Road Rage today. Yes. It's one of our most popular bits with the faithful listeners. We haven't done one in about a month and a half. We had the tape going for the uh, lovely commute in today, and uh, we're going to get that on later. Yeah, actually, I'm going to try to get it on before the end of the hour. Are you? Yeah. Good. Because there were some classics today. <laughs> the guy delivering the pork is uh, priceless. My favorite was the guy uh, illegally parked in the limo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we might have to set that up because I don't know if we got the audio. I think we might have. All right. We'll see. On the way, we got the Road Rage bit. And if you got something for the show, you know the deal. It's like the People's Radio Show. We uh, encourage you guys to participate in our lovely program. And there's mm -hmm. many ways you could do it. The, the first way is through the instant feedback. Oh, WNEW.com. Click on our pictures and you could uh, email us here in the studio. And, and we like to read about your opinions of the show, whether we suck or we rock, but also use it, you know, in a very uh, intelligent, creative way. Like if you, you got a comment about anything we've talked about in the last few weeks, you know, write your thoughts down, throw it into the studio, and Anthony reads uh, most of them on the air, actually. It's a way to get in. You know, it's the back door. Yeah, the back door to the show. Fax line 212-957-WNEW. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, two for Tuesday with the Goo Goo Dolls. That's name and slide before that off their latest CD, Dizzy Up the Girl. It's Opie and Anthony. Hello. And uh, the faxes are spilling in like crazy. This one says, I, I love your show. Would you please play Alice in Chains? I have never heard them on WNEW. We play Alice in Chains. Not enough, if you ask me. I love Alice in Chains. And uh, this person says, if you do, you will jump from preset number five to preset number one on my car radio. we got to play it then today. Well, there, wait, one, two, three, four. No, that's okay. Preset five is acceptable to us because that's, you know, the, the first set of presets. We'll take five. We just uh, don't want to be preset eight. I've been uh, reading a lot of email from people. We, we're moving all over the presets. Are we? But a lot of them, yeah, we're, we're falling into the between three and five. Just that whole area, three, four, five. We, we just want to be one of the first six. It takes something really big to boost you to that first spot. Right. That's your favorite station. That's the one you don't even have to take your eyes off the road when you hit that button. Yes. Boink, there's my station. There you go. Well, and we want to be that. And Bonnie writes, hi, open it. My friend Sandy is going out to Montauk right now to go fishing for the day. And guess what she has? She has a big banner with Opie and Anthony, a logo, and it says you got to listen or you don't know what you're missing. 102.7 uh, NEW. Wow. Say hello to her from her friend Bonnie. See? Well, that's good. But She's part of Phase 2, though. But out in Montauk? Yeah, but I'm sure she's driving from the city to Montauk. Oh, okay. She'll, she'll uh, advertise the show all through the LIE. I thought she just had the banner out at Montauk. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good thing. But well, we are Wouldn't looking for people to, uh, you know, to uh, promote our show for us. Phase two, yes. Phase two is uh, telling others about Opie and Anthony. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate that, Bonnie and friend. And then this guy writes, it's from Tom. Uh, he's offering me a free week, a weekend of fishing, so I don't have to go to any more apple festivals and pumpkin picking <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> Tom, you rule. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, oh, we had to go pumpkin picking this weekend. <laughs> I think everyone knows I had to go pumpkin picking because the email went nuts. That's all right, because I'm sure, I am sure, as God is my witness, next weekend, me and Opa are going to go out and we're going to the clubs or something. We're going to go watch some football at the bar or something, right? Real manly weekend next weekend, right? So anyway, on the way, we got... Uh, Where are you going next weekend, though? You mean you can't hang out? Gee, I wonder what you're doing. Wh tell everybody what you... You're <laughs> tell everyone what you're doing next weekend. After this weekend of pumpkin picking. Um, I'm going um, north. 
Yeah, you're going up north. Yeah. Must be something really uh, cool to do. Yeah, it's Where are you going? Cool. Our old stomping ground up there in uh, Massachusetts? Uh, I'm going to check out leaves. What? What? I'm going to check out some leaves. Check out what? Leaves. Le what? Leaf. Leaves? Leaves? <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that, people? Opie now goes from pumpkin picking out on Long Island to this weekend. He's going to go up north to watch the leaves change. I'll give you a hint, though. Well, it's 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 prime. It's prime up there. Is it the prime peak color? Peak color is happening. So you're going to drive a couple of hundred miles yep. to go see the leaves. <laughs> yep. You want a little hint? You want a little clue? Let me clue you in on something. If you wait a couple of weeks, it looks the same here. <laughs> see, it's a little south of where you're going to be going. Uh, yeah. So down here, they, they turn a couple of weeks later. So you mean if I wait a couple more weeks, I could just look out my window? You look at leaves. <laughs> You have to drive around and look at li That's just something you do when you're on your way somewhere cool during the fall. And you're like, hey, look at the leaves. That's kind of cool. Park the car. It's going to catch the game. Yeah, I'm going out of my way to see leaves. Yes, that's going to be great. So, Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Where's my bullwhip? Where's my bullwhip? I got to do it again. Come on. All right, here's Opie. I got my bullwhip that I got yesterday. I could crack this pretty good. I'm like Indiana Jones. All right. Here's Opie. Figure it out. Meow. <laughs> Meow. Meow. <laughs> you got it? Yeah, I think everyone got it. I think so. Anthony, what? You're no different. What are you doing this weekend? I'm different. What? You got cornered in, in, in bed uh, this morning. Yeah, Jen heard the show yesterday. Yeah. Talking about how guys and girls plan things differently. Guys don't really plan things. Well, that guy late in the show yesterday made a great point. He said that guys don't start thinking about the weekend until Thursday, Thursday afternoon. Yeah. And most women start thinking about uh, weekend plans on Monday. Yeah. And that's the problem that uh, guys are facing. See, we got to get more organized and start thinking about our weekend on <laughs> Monday. That's and then we'll have a say in what is going to happen every weekend. Well, instead of just being led into something. Right. So what did your wife say? The second I woke up, because she heard the show yesterday, yeah. she goes, got any plans for this weekend? Like, oh, jeez. And then I'm trying to think, God, i got to have some kind of plans. Because you know she's got a plan. Because she's got plans. <laughs> yeah. So if I don't have plans, all of a sudden, I have plans. Yeah. They're not my plans, but they're plans. So obviously you didn't have any plans no. for the weekend. So what are you doing this coming weekend? Well, friends are coming down from Massachusetts. And? We're going to hang out with them. And? And what? I know it's something stupid, and? I think we're going to check out some of those wineries, Addy. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Give me the whip. Give me the whip. Oh, come on. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, two for Tuesday. With Tom Petty, listen to her heart and free fall. And free falling was the song you had to be listening for this hour to win the Kenny Wayne Shepherd tickets. And Joe Carrington of Chester, New York, he was paying attention. And now he's uh, got a pair of tickets to see the taping of the VH1 Hard Rock Live, presented by American Express and The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. Tom in Westfield? Yeah. He doesn't like free falling. But Tom Petty, All right. for that reason. He just moved us to preset seven. Ah, uh, we lost. Uh, we lost ground. <laughs> Man, we walk such a fine line, don't we? We can't win. Come on, Tom. Give Tom, us a break. Come on, man. At least give us number six, so we're not on uh, the preset Bs. Yeah, we're on his second set of presets that you don't even know how to get to. For one lousy song. Come on, Tom. Bump us back up to at least six. Yeah, maybe someone out there really likes Free Fallen, and they'll they'll bump us from you know preset eight to preset five. Oh, I don't know how to do. We gotta with make up. Thing. We gotta make up <laughs> the losses here. We can't lose any more listeners. We we really need to start gaining <laughs> listeners at this point. Oh well. Doesn't anyone understand that? Uh, all right. Uh, later on, I think we're going to be talking with Reverend Al Sharpton. Yeah, what is he up to? He's going to Haiti. Why is he going to Haiti? Uh, to check out the damage done by Hurricane uh, Hurricane Georges. Oh, this just in. Hurricane Georges has been downgraded to a fall breeze. <laughs> a stiff breeze? Stiff breeze, so some leaves might uh, fall off your trees in front of your house. Reverend Al's uh, pissed, though, from what I hear. He's blaming the hurricane on the white man. 
<laughs> and we're going to be talking to him a little later. I can't wait to hear that. I can't either. Oh. I'm sure it'll all make sense coming from Reverend Al. Also, uh, the staff of the Opie and Anthony show, hard at work editing our Road Rage tape. <laughs> the staff. That's me and you. Hope he's doing it yeah. when the songs are on. I'm doing it while the songs are on. So <laughs> as soon as we get that edited, we'll put it on the air. People enjoy when we have road rage on the way into work. and uh, Had a couple of good, uh, stupid uh, MFs on the road today. So The best was uh, the, the port guys. We saw a few of them on our way in Riding today. bicycle. Riding the bicycle. I yeah. ride my Schwinn bicycle, deliver Mong Chang pork. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, two for Tuesday with Bruce Springsteen, Candy's Room, and Pink Cadillac. The box set, I do believe, is coming out November 17th, if I'm not mistaken. It's Opie and Anthony. A little later this hour, you got to be listening for Foxy Lady from Jimi Hendrix. When you hear that, if you're the 10th caller at 212-757-1027, you got a pair of tickets to see Kenny Wayne Shepherd. Opie, we are not alone. In our suffering at times when we have to do these things on the weekends with the girlfriend, wife. You know how guys are. We we never make plans, so we're always included. In plans. In uh, the woman's plans. Uh, Brendan, out on Long Island. Uh, hey, guys, there's a good chance I'll run into either one of you two this weekend. My wife is undecided about which ride is shorter, either out to Long Island to the winery or up up north so Opie can watch the leaves change. <laughs> Is he going to watch the leaves change this uh, weekend? Too? He doesn't know. At this point, he his wife is undecided. She hasn't decided yet. Yeah. Oh, of course. She's got to decide. Okay. Then we got another fax here. I guess Paul. Uh, heard your show. Topic about plans. I've been married seven years, and I, it just doesn't matter what day I submit my plans for approval. They are vetoed. Tell Anthony that the winery tour is among the worst of the weekends. I had to endure five hours with her parents sipping wine. Just shoot me next time and spare me the agony. <laughs> Tell him just to start convulsing after the second glass and maybe he can spend the day in the emergency room. It has to be more enjoyable. <laughs> I love the sarcasm, Oh, guys. my God, really? Uh, Jeff writes in an email, Okay, I have you guys on preset one, but if I hear another Goo Goo Dolls song, you go on to preset eight. Oh, they're we holding us win. hostage. They are holding What's us hostage. the presets? We got one girl that's going to make us preset one if we play Owls and Chains. The other guy's going to take us off his presets altogether if we play Free Fallen again. Right. Here's a guy that's going to take us off if we play the Goo Goo Dolls again. And there's another guy that says, uh, F the guy that doesn't like Petty. Don't stop playing Petty on that idiot's request. I suffered through the hooch. He doesn't like that song. I'll be back on Friday to send a big F you to the guy that said not to play Petty. <laughs> This is great. Right on. All right. Uh, the Facts Live, if you want in on the conversation today, 212-957-WNEW. Still got to get to the Yankees and all sorts of other things happening uh -huh. around town. If you got yes. any thoughts, give us a call or give us an instant feedback there. Mm -hmm. Go to the WNEW website and click on our pictures, and that uh, instant feedback will go right to us here in the studio. The Rock of New York, 1027-WNEW, two for Tuesday with Harold Smith. Train kept a roll in all night long and crazy from the Get a Grip CD. It's Opie and Anthony. Good news, Anthony. What? Our road rage is just about edited and ready for airplay. Ooh. We're going to do that in the 5 o'clock hour. It's a, it's a bit that a lot of the faithful listeners really, really enjoy. Well, it's... Because uh, they can relate to Yeah, it, they can relate know? to that. Driving in, oof. And the best part about it is uh, the comments we make in between cursing out drivers. Uh, we talk about all the people we see on the sidewalks. It's brutal, actually. I usually don't remember it. I black out when I drive in. Yeah, it's I a, just can't take the pressure. It's a taste of reality, though. Also on the way, we got Al Sharpton uh, making a visit today. Yeah, he's uh, going to Haiti. Okay. Uh, see uh, how much damage was done by the hurricane. Now, when is Al supposed to make his appearance? Like they haven't had this huge thing that's full of wind hit him already. Reverend Al's going to visit, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think as soon as... Uh, as soon as you write it? As soon as I write this. <laughs> Reverend Al will be on. <laughs> I don't have a time schedule. <laughs> it takes a while to think of things that rhyme with cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone can help us out, we need to rhyme for cash at this point. This is how we do our show. People think we're polished and have it all no. figured out before we come on the air. No. If you got a rhyme for cash, uh, yeah, fax it in to us, 212-957-WNEW. Got to get the listeners involved. Great, now you're going to get 6,000 faxes. Lash, right. Ash, Mash. All right. 
Thank any, you. any type of rhyme with money is usually uh, mm. helps out the bit. Also, I got the Skidmark songs. You want to hear a little ditty real fast here? Our little pal, Skidmark. We kind of yeah. like this guy because he's, um, he's immature like us. <laughs> We're in our 30s, though, and he's 11. I think he's 12, <laughs> isn't he? 12. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's moving up there. But when you're that age, it's a big difference, though. It's not like going, hey, I'm 34. Oh, 35. Yeah. 11 and 12 to a boy is like big, big 12, deal. 12 and 13 is the big difference, though. That's true. I am just mean one year makes a lot to a kid. Well, he called us Friday with his great song about Bill and Monica, and we laughed pretty hard. And then uh, he fed extra package to us. He's pretty sharp. With other song parodies he did. I could just see his mom playing the piano at home while a uh, little 12-year-old <laughs> Skidmark, you know, sings a, a ditty. Skidmark. Would you like to hear his song, um, I Like to Fart, or the Charles Grodin toupee song? I want to hear the Charles Grodin toupee song. All right. We can play to... that. This is our new pal Skidmark, or Skidmarks. Skidmarks. He's coming in, what, tomorrow, actually, to perform live. In the Imaginary Ballroom. He's on gonna, our show. He's going to jam. Well, we're just like Rosie O'Donnell having kids on the show. Well, it helps her rating, so. Only it's a little bit more twisted, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. All right, so this is 12-year-old uh, Skidmarks and his lovely little tune about Charles Grodin's hairpiece. Charles Grodin wears a funny little ratty ass toupee on his bald head. And I can't determine if the damn thing is either living or dead. Maybe he should take it for a check up at the local SPCA. For I think that little wiglet needs assistance in the worst way. <laughs> Come on. He's, he's 12 and he's making up songs about Charles Grodin's toupee. That's good. He's what got were, a career. What were you doing at 12? Um, nothing. Exactly. Nothing. I was delivering penny savers on Long Island at You 12. at least were motivated. I was doing nothing. Oh, Daddy just give you an allowance? No, uh, sorry, uh, Daddy uh, left when I was uh, 11, I think. So, no, Daddy wasn't around, Opie. So how'd you get your money for your baseball cards? And... I don't know, I think I stole it. I don't, I don't even know. I, I blocked all that out of my head. The scary part is, if I if I pressured you, I think you probably did st steal it. Yeah, I probably did. Yeah? Yeah. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, two for Tuesday with Jimi Hendrix, Hey Joe, and Foxy Lady. Foxy Lady was the song you had to be listening for this hour to score the tickets to see Kenny Wayne Shepherd and John Boda of Staten Island was paying attention and he's got a pair of tickets to the taping of VH1's Hard Rock Live presented by American Express and The Rock of New York 1027 WNEW the next song you got to be listening for is Brass in Pocket by The Pretenders sometime in the 5 o'clock hour we'll do that and all you have to do is be the 10th caller to score the Kenny Wayne Shepherd tickets doing this all day long for you by the way Good. Very busy day. It's Opie and Anthony. A lot of people liked uh, Skidmark songs that we just played a little while ago. Very cute. <laughs> Talented little kid, right? Isn't he? Yes. On the way, uh, we got Al Sharpton making a visit. 1027 WNEW, The Rock in New York, Super Tuesday, David uh, Bowie, the man who sold the world. Uh, uh, Someone called up and said, I thought Nirvana did that song. No, mm. it's David Bowie's song. Nirvana did a little cover of that. Also, Golden Years before that. Sophie and Anthony, two Hello. for Tuesday. Al Sharpton will be calling in in about a half hour. He's going to Haiti. Going to Haiti, and he's going to discuss his little trip with us today. Like they haven't had enough big wind down there. Now they the, got to deal with Reverend Al. Reverend Al is going to go down. Right on. Okay. He's on a fact-finding mission. Really? And that's what the paper says. What's he going to find out? That a lot of people died, I guess. Which is obviously very tragic. Yeah, but I don't know what he's going down there for. You sure he's not going down there for his own purposes? Not Reverend Al. He wouldn't go down there to try to raise money for his own causes, would he? Opie, now stop it. <laughs> I, you know, personally, I don't know how Reverend Al gets his money for those nice suits uh, that he wears these days. And the and big medallions and stuff. Medallions and airfare to, to go to Haiti. And the hair products. The hair products alone have to amount to thousands of dollars a month. Does anyone know what Al does for a living when he's not uh, marching? He's always marching or g g flying off now to Haiti. No, I'm serious. I'm curious. Does anyone really know what he does? He must have a job when he's not doing that no justice, no peace thing. That's his job. I don't know. He's going down with other members of, of the clergy. Okay. All right, well, we'll, we'll get in Al's know. head in a little bit. We got that reverend thing. Yeah. Matchbook cover. 
Well, they, they finally uh, handed over the road rage bit. So we all right. It finally. We had to get all the curses out of it and make it radio friendly. Oh, God, I wish they would get into, like, maybe, maybe at the turn of the century we'll be able to curse on the air. That's you kind know? of stupid that we can't. Everyone knows. Okay, watch. Here's a little test. Yeah. The F word. Okay. Go ahead. Say it in your head. Ready? Go. All right. Very good. Everyone knows what I meant. And everyone heard that everyone word heard at least once today. Yeah. So. Can't say it, though. What if, like, I say the first part and you say the second part? Ooh, I don't know. Are we breaking rules? I don't know. Maybe there's a gap that's got to go in the middle. Like, if I say, <laughs> I don't know. Can we get a <laughs> It. Well, there you go. I don't know. I don't even know what the ruling is on that. As long as there's a gap? I mean, I know, don't know. I just said the my ruling. <laughs> and you said the cuff. <laughs> Is that who way knows? around the rule? I don't know. Who knows? I don't even know what the rules are. Are we going to be fine for even experimenting with that? Who knows? Probably. All right. So uh, from time to time, we like to tape ourselves on the way into the city. Mm -hmm. And if you've never heard this before, um, what you're going to hear, you got to, like, set the scene. Yes. It's uh, me and Anthony having lots of road rage, mostly Anthony because he drove today. I drive. It's like a scene out of the road warrior when I'm driving. Yeah. I have a mission. I have to get from point A to point B. There are people in my way, and I'm taking it personally. There you go. And in between cursing out other drivers, we uh, make fun of every single person we see on the sidewalk. <laughs> you got to comment. Which, and we don't do these bits often because it's kind of scary to roll down your window and start screaming at complete strangers in the middle of uh, Manhattan. We do it when we don't have tape rolling. Yeah, true, but all right. Well, here's our ride in today. Check it out. making a comeback. Look at that yeah, hair. Yeah. The exact shade of Ronald McDonald's hair. <laughs> don't walk, me, Don't walk! I'm telling him. Fucking assholes. Move! What do you think they hide under those turbans? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, look at this old lady, Ant. Ain't gravity a bitch. <laughs> Holy shit. Why is she limping? Tough night. Look at all the dirty little girls going into Victoria's Secret. <laughs> You're a filthy girl, aren't you? You buy daddy a teddy. Well, don't let him in, don't let him in! He ain't getting anywhere. Denied! Oh, get out of here! Come, Come on, f***ing idiot! Oh, there's another one, there's another one. <laughs> hey, pork! Why you deliver our pork? Is that Wing Tang's or Tao Fung's pork? With all these scooters, it's starting to look like downtown Hanoi. <laughs> Look at the size of this guy's bike chain. It's as big as the Titanic <laughs> anchor. Why even bother at that point? Because if he lose bike, he can't deliver a pork. Yeah, but the chain costs more than the bike at this point. <laughs> that van hates you. F him. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, come on with these f***ing people. Yeah, just stop right there. Look at this guy. F*** you. Oh, he trying to make you your bitch. F*** him. That brownie lady knocking on a guy's hood. Trying to get him uh, to move his car. Of course, she's gonna give him a ticket. He's pissed. She's knocking on his hood. He's not happy. She made you her bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I listen to a black person. <laughs> <laughs> For you kids at home, he says it's the only time you will listen to a black person. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Can you feel the love? Damn, that's harsh. Move, fing cabby. Move. Where are you going? Where the fing are you going? Oh, that's a killer move. I bet you he don't like girls. <laughs> He's got to get a World War II Nazi helmet on. I see that. He's got a Nazi helmet Jesus. on. He says, oh, good. <laughs> and we made it. Hey, what's he? Opie and Anthony, 1027. Oh, Reverend Al is on hold. We'll talk to Mr. Sharpton next. At least it sounds like Mr. Sharpin. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, Super Tuesday with Nirvana. 
That song is about a girl from the Unplugged CD and Come As You Are, of course, before that. A couple from the Unplugged CD. Sophie and Anthony, got to say hi to everyone on their way to the stadium for the big game tonight. Yeah, Yankees. It's going to just uh, it's gonna be a horrible ride to the stadium, though. Yeah. Rush hour, you got the long wait, but uh, we'll try to keep you entertained. Yes. Keep it on NEW. And if you like what you hear today, make us one of your presets. <laughs> That's what we're going for, right? Yes, Preset. we are going for that. Top preset. Yes. Well, Opie, as we said before, Reverend Al is heading to Haiti. He's uh, part of a contingent of um, clergy that's going down there. And he's, gonna, he's on some kind of fact-finding mission. I don't know what he's looking for. What kind of facts? Well, he's going to see how much damage there was and yeah. see what he could do to help out the, the poor people down there. Well, I think well, I'm seeing a lot of money in the paper. You know, United States is shipping like a half a million dollars worth of supplies to the Dominican Republic. Puerto Rico alone damage is expected to top two billion dollars. <laughs> Wait a minute. Two billion dollars in Puerto Rico? Doesn't something have to be worth a certain amount before it can be damaged that much? <laughs> well, anytime I... <laughs> How much is a tin shack cost? <laughs> I saw the news footage. All the, like, big buildings and, and stuff on the beachfront, that was fine. Yeah. Nothing happened to those. No. The big, uh, expensive hotels are just fine. Yeah. Right. It seemed to be like the shanty towns that blew down. Yes. They don't take the words of the Three Little Pigs book. <laughs> Straw blew away when the Big Bad Wolf did it. Yeah. Hay, same thing. Yes. Bricks stands up to the wind. Okay. Reverend Al, uh, going to Haiti. Yeah, I guess he's, uh... Oh, yeah. What's he looking for? What's he doing down there? He, he just wants to lend his support, obviously. Well, let's Maybe talk. he's going to get a hammer and start, you know, rebuilding the <laughs> shanty towns. I don't think so. <laughs> Take that big-ass medallion of him, uh, of his and uh, hammer some nails in. Use it like a hammer. <laughs> yeah. Cling, cling, cling. <laughs> All right. Al's on the phone. Let's get to him here. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. All right, Al, calm down. Open the gate, I'm a coming to Haiti. <laughs> I am on a fact-finding mission. I believe the white man has a weather machine and is using it against people of color. Come on, you're out of your mind. Haven't you seen Simon Bar Sinister on the underdog cartoon? Yes. He had a weather machine <laughs> and he is a white man. <laughs> Why do you think they call that country Haiti? I don't know, Al. Why? Because Whitey Haiti's the black man. <laughs> have you ever seen a hurricane from a satellite photo? Yeah, I have. Now, what color is it? Uh, it's usually white. It is white. <laughs> Why are there no black hurricanes? Because they are products of the white man. <laughs> Wait a minute, Reverend Al. Most hurricanes originate in Africa. Well, uh, well, uh... Yes, and they are brought here from Africa against their will to do the white man's dirty work. Now, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Now, I need donations for the devastations. People are suffering. Send your cash to Reverend Al. My wallet will be engorged with your cash for the victims of George. My hair can withstand hurricane force winds, but these houses in Haiti could not. The roof caved in, so let the cash flow begin. <laughs> Send your checks to Reverend Al at the Apollo Theater and make them out to my organization, Care About Suffering Haitians. <laughs> now, for short, you could just put C-A-S-H. <laughs> now, I can't be lady. I got to go to Haiti. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, two from the Pretenders on Two for Tuesday. That's Cuban Slide and Brass and Pocket before that. Brass and Pocket was the song you had to be listening for this hour for the tickets to see Kenny Wayne Shepherd. And Ed Lippert of New Jersey was paying attention, and he's got a pair of tickets to see Kenny Wayne in the taping of VH1's Hard Rock Live presented by American Express and The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. There you go. People like the Al Sharpton thing. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. Wow. Wow. Someone's saying we're a racist, Opie. We're racist? Yeah. Why are we racist? Because, hey, you're too racist. That drunken woman's going to beat her kids all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, what the hell? Stall. Remember her? Yeah, stall. I cannot believe you. You definitely ain't trying to make friends and get listeners in the black community. Huh. I'll get the drunk lady. Hold on. I screwed up. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, this lady. She, she was calling us a racist last week. Because we were talking about Sammy Sosa and, and how everyone in Washington Heights was soaping up their window with yeah. uh, Sosa 66. Mm -hmm. So this lady thought we were racist. Check this out. Hi, N.E.W. Yeah, now, now racism is something that you, you put on the air, too. Wait, is there no stopping you guys? Is there no damn stopping you guys? You're this, still conscious? This friggin I thought you'd be passed out by now. This calls up the spit guy, and you're making fun of him? <laughs> he can write whatever the hell he wants on his car with his soap, okay? He can write down that 1027 bad station if he wants to. <laughs> Hello? You're a rip, lady. Hold on a second. Hello? Yeah, what? Listen, yeah. I don't want any more racism. I already beeped my husband, and he's going to call you guys, he said, and he's really mad, okay? Uh, all right. And me listening to you is going to make his dinner cold, and he comes home with the dinner cold. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be on your head, you racist. You're racist. Say you're a racist. Accept it. <laughs> Say you're a drunk. Accept it. I don't want. Who's I your like husband, Jack Daniels? <laughs> Listen, I like gin, okay? Bombay, sapphire, gin. All right, we got to go. We got to go. 1027 WNAW, The Rock of New York with the cars on Two for Tuesday. Later this hour, you got to be listening for Selling the Drama from live to pick up those tickets to see Kenny Wayne Shepard. Tenth caller will get him when you hear that song. Uh, the phone number here is 212-757-1027. You're hanging with Opie and Anthony. Hello. How are you? Yeah, good. You uh, catching any of the uh, new TV shows? I caught ER last week. Did you? Yeah. Was it good? It was kind of disappointing. Really? Yeah. See, the new season's coming out, and I haven't watched one new show. Well, I don't watch sitcoms anymore, except no. for, well, I do watch Frasier. Frasier's good. It's funny. Although, I didn't like the premiere episode. No. I don't know. I think they're all losing it. As I look through the paper, I see uh, the desperate UPN network, who actually had the Dice Man at one point, lost that catch. You know whose birthday it is today? Oh. Uh, the dice man. Well, maybe we could get him in a little bit. Well, he is sitting out there. In, wait. Yeah, he's out there. I think he's just kind of uh, waiting around, hoping someone's going to give him a birthday present today. How old is he? Um, they say he's forty. He can't be. He's much he was older. Forty, than 40. about five years ago. Maybe dice. Uh, yeah, we'll get dice in a little while. Yeah. Then. Oh, now he's looking at us. No dice. No, 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 no. Sit down. Sit down. We'll call for you. Come on, let me in, guys. No, 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 no. It's my birthday. You're not going to let me in. Hold the door. Hold the door. Don't let him in. Don't let him in. God, man. Man, he, he's desperate for airtime. Always. And he's always just hanging out in the NEW uh, hallways. We'll get him in later. All Happy right. birthday. Anyway, UPN, new show, yes. UPN going uh, with, I think, shock value. The Secret Diary of Desmond Pfeiffer. Mm. A lot of flack happening about this show. Uh, UPN desperately seeking viewers is trying a mix of the Civil War and Benson. <laughs> Horrible concept and no better series. This guy, Desmond Pfeiffer, is the butler for Abe Lincoln. And, they, and he's a black guy. And they have a whole series that revolves around this? It's a wacky comedy about slavery and the Civil War. <laughs> oh, that's Zanerific. <laughs> Outrageous. Not the worst uh, show in TV history, though. For being un-PC? Yeah. Hogan's Heroes, without a doubt. Ah, you got a point. Wins that hands down. Yeah, those fun-loving, wacky Nazis. <laughs> Wasn't that great? We, as kids, you know, I'd watch Hogan's Heroes, and it's a comedy with swastikas in it. Yeah. Like, they all had the armbands and everything. Yeah. Hogan! A comedy that revolves around a concentration camp. Oh. Thank you are a fool! <laughs> Love that show. But we didn't know any better back then. No. Mad About You, debuting tonight. That is the funniest show ever. I can't stop laughing at Mad About You. It is so funny. You know what? Let, let me let me see what's happening tonight on the <laughs> premiere debut episode of Mad About You because I'm sure the concept alone has got to crack me up. Let's see. Paul Reiser. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's got a life-threatening uh, problem and he's in the hospital. And Helen Hunt is there weeping over his body as they <laughs> wheel him into surgery. <laughs> Have you seen? <laughs> God, that show's hysterical. 
<laughs> yeah, there's nothing better than terminal illness. Is it a very special episode of Mad About You? Every they... episode is a very special episode. Do they have a dramatic uh, music in the beginning? Uh -huh. Slow motion footage where it's uh, a very special episode of Mad About You. It's a laugh riot! <laughs> you, should, you should have seen the commercial for it. They say, like, Helen Hunt in a dramatic... Because she won the uh, Academy Award. Yeah. So now she's no longer funny, I guess. She yeah. can't be funny. So now they got some kind of problem where Paul Rise is going to drop dead. I am proud to say that I have never, ever sat through an entire episode of Mad About You. Thank you. It's supposed to be funny. And I, I'm sure I, on this show, mm -hmm. like he'll be ready to die and she's crying. And he's going, I love you, honey. I love you. Oh, please, please survive it. And then he'll do something. Oh, I hope I get a good doctor. Oh. <laughs> you know, like that nervous laughter in the middle of something that isn't funny. Yeah, and then by next week, they'll make believe uh, that never happened. It never happened. I, I hate when they do that. Everything's said, fine now, oh, honey. Everything's fine. Oh, yeah. yeah I had a, oh, a life-threatening illness last week, but now we're going to have some more wacky baby food. Fun. Last week, I remember they took my liver out. Now I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> now we could be funny again. And, um, you know you're getting older. Hmm. Well, we're only six short years away from actually being able to have a legal threesome with the Olsen twins. <laughs> Think about it. Isn't that frightening? Six short years away from legally being able to bed the Olsen twins. So how old are they? And they were infants when uh, that, that show was on. What are they, like 10, 11 now already? They're 12 years old. 12 years old, okay. The cute little Olsen twins have a new show on, on Friday. Oh. Uh, uh, it takes two, is it? Or the two of us? Or it's only they, some two thing. Are they still cute? I mean, what kind of topics well, are they going to tackle? One of them is getting cuter than the other one, yeah. I've noticed. Okay. You know, and you can tell one's like going to be okay, and the other one might go down the he <laughs> road. <laughs> but one of them's looking okay. I think in the premiere episode, they each get their period at the same time. <laughs> it's going to be cute. One of them likes pads and one likes tampons, so it's going to be a wacky, goofy show. Best show on TV, period. TGIF. There you go. <laughs> TGIF. <laughs> Cute little show. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Twins. Can't wait to go home wow. and watch a little TV tonight. Yeah, that's great. My advice, uh, watch get, the Yankees. Get that Blockbuster uh, account going. Get your Blockbuster video card. <laughs> Rent them. Yeah, watch the Yankees. Oh, and, and a Real World is tonight. I'm kind of losing interest. You're losing interest in, in this in season. Real, world, of real world started off real good. Yeah, but now it's kind of I don't know. Irene uh, slapped. Uh, no, Stephen slapped Irene last slapped week. Slapped Irene last week. That was pretty cool. That was pretty intense. It's. It, you know what though? I I can't get over the the good one, the one with Puck. Yeah, San Francisco is by far the best one. There was nothing better than. Buck, Buck, I saw you. You you pick your scares, and then you put your finger in the peanut butter. I saw. I have a, a boyfriend. You wait, know. wait, 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 wait. Before you move on, Pedro had uh, worse problems than worried about a dirty f finger in peanut butter. Yeah, Pedro had AIDS. He had full-blown AIDS, and he's worried about a, a guy sticking his dirty fingers in peanut butter. I mean, come uh, on. I, I think he should have worried more about something else being stuck somewhere else than uh, fingers in peanut butter, Pedro. <laughs> Maybe they would have skirted a problem. Yeah. Then he got in a relationship. I'm in a relationship right now. You know, he's cute. <laughs> We're in love. We're going to be married. I cannot live in this environment. This is not a healthy environment. I'm going to have to leave the house. It's either me, I go or fuck goes. <laughs> That was my favorite real world. Yeah, that was the best by far. But this one isn't bad. Bro. Seattle's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm kind of losing interest, though. Uh, Irene uh, called Steven out and, and said that he's gay, and then Steven got really pissed and smacked her hard in the face. Yeah, call, uh, the girl calls him gay, and he slaps her. <laughs> I'll slap you. <laughs> call me gay. <laughs> All right. So there's going to be some implications. He might have to leave the show for hitting a girl. Oh. What do you think is going to happen with that one, Anthony? I just hope on one real world, maybe in years to come, there's, there's no one left. They all get thrown out, and they just tape an empty house for months. Actually, I wish they would do the real, real world and, you know, tape a bunch of guys living in their parents' house in the basement, you know, a bunch of guys that work at a deli. Or paying rent. Or paying rent. Yeah, there's something that's actually real. So, all right. There you go. I don't even know where we're going now. I think we have to play music here. Oh, that, that's probably a good idea. Oh, yeah, we do that on this show.
1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York with live on Two for Tuesday all over you and Selling the Drama. Selling the Drama was the song you had to be listening for to score the tickets to see Kenny Wayne Shepherd and Dave Mason of Valley Stream, New York on the island was listening and paying attention and he's got a pair of tickets to see Kenny Wayne at a taping of VH1's Hard Rock Live presented by American Express and your friends at The Rock of New York. 1027 WNEW. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hey, you know, speaking of tickets. Yeah. I just noticed that uh, we're giving away Aerosmith tickets uh, beginning Friday at noon, and we're going to do that all weekend long. Wow. That, that's a good deal. That is huge for Tuesday, October 13th at Jones Beach. You <laughs> getting what? I'm just remembering last time we gave away Aerosmith tickets <laughs> at the, the uh -oh. station we were at before we got fired. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, because usually you give away tickets, Wait, uh, and people are very happy. Dude, what, you know where it is? Yeah, go ahead. Tell the, tell the people. People are very happy. Like, I would be... Pleased to win Aerosmith tickets from a radio station. Uh, secondary is where the seats are. Right. You know, just the fact that you're going is, is pretty cool. Yeah. We gave away Aerosmith tickets, I guess, what was that, a couple of years ago? A couple of years back. And this woman calls up, and we thought she was going to thank us for them, and just starts ragging us because the seats weren't good enough for her. <laughs> they were what were called lawn seats on the venue. Yeah. Which, you know, you got a bunch of rows of seats, and then there's a grass area where you can put out a blanket and grab, you know, a bottle, whatever, a party with your friends. It's pretty cool, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. She didn't like them. No, not at all. Bring your binoculars. It's going to be a good show. <laughs> I'll wave to you from the front row. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> wow. But we are giving away Aerosmith tickets uh, this Friday at noon, and we'll do that all weekend long for you. I'm she sure. Was appreciative, wasn't she? Now that we work at this fine radio station, that hey, we will have uh, sing happy birthday, very huh? good seats for I the show. you're not singing happy birthday to me, huh? What the hell? Rick, you were supposed Why to watch the door. You weren't it's supposed my to watch the today. It's my birthday. You're not going to let her say happy birthday to me. Uh, happy I birthday. I thought she was my pals. Hi, happy birthday. You're guys. not going to just sing me a song? No, I'm not going to sing you a song. You've been you've been waiting out there for four hours just to come in yeah. to, to have us wish you a happy birthday? I, th I thought you'd have a cake for me. Because you was my pals. I thought you'd have a, a birthday cake for me or something. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We don't, Dice. Uh, you know. Yeah. What are you, you going to do for your birthday? I don't, I don't think you have many friends. I mean, where are you going to go? I got go? plenty of friends. Yeah. I used to be somebody back in the 80s. I packed out Madison Square Garden. The key words. You don't remember that? The key words, used to. I'm still playing. <laughs> I'm still packing clubs out. Can I plug? Yeah, all right. Get a quick plug in for your birthday. All right. I'm going to be at Jimmy's Comedy Toilet in Jersey. <laughs> and I'm going to be, I laughed so hard I popped a nut in Poughkeepsie sometime next week. They still got to verify. All right. But uh, it's, I'm still funny. I'm still relevant. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about all the big issues, all people. Yeah, do you have a joke about any of the big issues, Dice? Well, how about the, uh, we got the Bill and Monica in the Oval Office. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah. This is uh, good stuff. Uh, well, how about Bill Clinton, he's sitting in the Oval Office, and Monica comes in, he's, hey, Monica, how about you give me a Lewinsky? And she goes, oh, but you're the president. And Bill goes, get over here and sing a <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Dice, See, I still set him on fire you're laughing. Dice, the problem is no one really wants to hear about the president. It's been rehashed. He goes to the bathroom. Uh, He's in the bathroom next to the Oval Office yeah. with some chick. Yeah. And this chick looks up and goes, oh, Mr. President, why do you still stay with Hillary? He goes, because I could get a sword like you have. I give me. <laughs> Funny to see you laughing your balls off. That's how they're going to be no, 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 at, no, at no, the no, comedy no, banana no, out of Trenton. No, no, they're no, going to no, no. laugh your balls off. Dice, we're laughing at you, not with you. Yeah, yeah, they keep saying that as long as you're laughing. Yeah, okay. So Bill Clinton, he's on Air Force One, right? Yeah. And the stewardess comes by. Oh, Mr. President, would you like a drink? Yeah, and wouldn't you like one? I have been a gaggy. <laughs> Come on. So you're laughing your balls off at me. Guys. On my birthday. Yeah, guys, and by the way, they guys, made a mistake. Guys, just take them. Just take them. I want to say they made a mistake on uh, what the date the my microphone. birthday take is. Take away from the microphone. They made a mistake take on my birthday. Take them away from the I'm microphone. I'm not 40. I'm not 40. Yeah, all right. Get out of here. I'm 35. Yeah, get out of here. So rude. He takes my mic. I can't. I can't even talk. Who we'll let him in today? We we said we wouldn't have him in this week. Uh, I don't know. All right, Matt. Disinfect this thing, please. Matt Devotee's up next. Matt, you giving away tickets? Your mic's not on. Just scream. I don't know. All right, Matt. We'll, <laughs> Matt will figure it out.